Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth part tutorial of how to model an iPhone headphones and <clears throat> um, I've just um, we've just left this uh, earphone uh, that way and I wanted to had a few other uh, holes this time here um, in the real uh, earphone you have like five holes uh, like hairways um, for the speaker you know so um, we need to model this and I just run some tests in order to understand like for the fourth time that I'm doing this but still I'm trying to figuring out what's the best way to do this so uh, apparently what we should do is hold down shift right click insert edge loop insert one edge loop over okay sorry <laughs> this is this was 20 or 10 um, hold down shift sorry bring it back to object mode I don't know why I have some uh, mistakes today but this is how it goes so um, avoid these mistakes um, where it says insert edge loop tool um, I want you to take on this box because if you done something like I did so you may want to reset this tool of this um, edge loops and add one more edge loops like this okay so <clears throat> just one okay now the next thing is um, hold down and choose vertex, vertex hold down the right um, right mouse button and here we have like uh, this vertex and this one we want to choose five vertices okay like this and we want to go over edit mesh chamfer vertex um, yeah like so and then switch to object mode by pressing F8 now hold down shift, right click, choose split and split polygon tool and we are going to draw some lines so the first line will be from the middle here okay and click once, hold you need to hold, click and hold and drag it until it meets this vertex point and release and then tap on the letter G on your keyboard so it will close the line okay this time it's no I'm in my native language sorry press G it will close this line and you can start drawing immediately without choosing anything just click release and click drag and release um, hit G again one click I just want to make things clear this tool you need to click and while you are still holding the, the the button you can drag this dot wherever you want so you can just adjust it and release and then the next point will be somewhere in uh, one of those lines because we want to meet this vertex so you can click and hold this okay and slide it over the vertex point here until it you can't go further and then release and hit G this is how this tool works so again like so G okay now whenever you do things like this one you see I'm just uh, crossing this line here uh, so basically you need to you need to point you need to point the the, ne the next the second point to be here because otherwise it may stuck somewhere here on top of this line now also whenever you create a crossing line like this uh, it creates a meeting point between those two lines here see there is a vertex point in here so uh, you need to take this in mind um, whenever you crossing uh, lines uh, it creates a meeting point between them so 
this is it, let's keep doing this. We're going to do this to all of those um, apparently cubes like, okay. Click, second click and drag, click, click and hold, drag, and hit the G, click, click and hold, drag, and hit G again. So just like that. I hope it's easy for you. You get used to someone. And we'll just continue this faster. Now the first and the last cube uh we have like an uh it's not like the same the same pattern like you know in the, the cubes in the middle because we have those uh, who support this and if you like this to be supported also you may want to come over here and then click once more over here and then click here and here this will help to uh, you know constraint I think this is the word for it um, the this area okay now if I will eat three on my keyboard just to see the smooth preview by the way I need to be in object mode and just yeah like so you can see what it gives us okay now in some ways it's okay because there is just a very tiny problem which is this area here which became a little bit higher which is not like the rest of this uh, faces loops okay and it may need a modification if you really like to uh, spend time on figuring out how to uh, you know uh, make this blending uh, become smoother but um keep it to some other time you know your spare time if you like to keep on modeling this earphone from right now and without having any other problems issues along the way just keep following the same thing i do but make sure that maybe one day you will uh, give some extra um attention for things like that uh, now I selected those faces here and I just wanted to uh, delete, delete them so tap delete on your keyboard it will delete those always make sure that nothing goes wrong at the uh, other side any action you do uh, just make sure that everything is okay now we need to grab those vertices okay where we started to draw those lines in each cube, okay, in each cube like this, and I want you to, what you want, I want you to grab the scale tool and grab the middle cube here and do something like this. So um, your shape will have to look something like that, okay, and it may need more modification, but first let's do this to the rest of those. Uh, let's switch to selection tool, so this gizmo won't interfere us now you need to do it one by one uh, like one cube at a time because you can do them all at the same time it will overlap your uh, faces here so oh sorry this, is, this one was the extrude and yeah basically this is what we're going to do extrude them in a few seconds so um yeah those are okay again make sure uh, you know I just did it right now but I know that I always can undo that if I see that uh, there is a problem appear somewhere <clears throat> now from here I want you to get bring uh, get the back to object mode and press free now 
I want you to examine your holes. I want to, I want you to see that they are truly circle or and not something like this or like you see most of them doesn't really look like circles, but it really depends on the angle you look at them. Now, if they are not really circular, uh, I encourage you first to make sure that each one of them is at the same uh, scale, okay, Doesn't, don't do anything that is not. Now, if for instance this one is not at the same scale as others, grab these edges while you are at non-smooth preview mode and you can scale it like so, okay. So you can modify all those um, scale like that, one by one, okay. And if still yet um, the shape doesn't look that good for you, you can hold down vertices, choose whatever vertices that are not placed well and start <coughs> move them with your move tool but in very gentle way. Also always make sure you look at them that way after modifying them so you will know if <coughs> any of those are ac accidentally went up or down because it can give you those uh, problems okay and <coughs> when you're done you select edges select double click one edge here shift double click one edge here shift still hold down the shift double click this one double click this one and that one now um, we want to reset the extrude tool, I think we have a problem with it, so edit mesh, this little box here, I think it's resetted already, so extrude. Now instantly when you're pressing <coughs> the extrude, I want you to click on the move tool, and that way you can just bring them down that way, okay? And go over mesh, fill hole at the same time okay after you bring them bring those down and here I want you to grab each one of those faces and <clears throat> I want you to go over mesh sorry edit mesh poke face okay it will give you those um, cutting edges along this face okay so it meets those other um, lines around the, the shape and then hold down right click choose vertex and I want you to choose each of those middle vertex great now go over edit mesh chamfer vertex them all at once and bring bring it back by pressing F8 to object mode. Now hold down shift, right click insert edge loop tool and the reason I closed those lines earlier when okay was because I want to add one more edge here. Now you see there is some missing part here also here I'm not sure why it's happening, but whatever will be the reason, we will need to fix this. So make sure you add as much lines there, okay? And make make sure they are close to the other edges. Truly, don't know what what's the reason that they don't uh, act as one like this one, but still, it's not good. So what we will do here, we will switch back to object mode, hold down shift, right click, split, split polygon tool, and we are going to do same as we did with those lines, just to close those um, lines. So one click over this edge and slide it until it meets this point, okay? It meets this point here, and then hold down on this, click on this edge, hold down don't don't make it to snap over here just a little bit farther here and release and then click on this hold drag until it meets this point okay that's great hit 
G on your keyboard and that will should close this again we are going to do the same over here but a little bit with more uh, edges okay you see G and then again here and one another click here meets the point and G repeat this same thing over each one of those circles okay um, yeah and G one click drag release one click here drag adjust it release one click here drag it until it meets the point and G to close this also here so I will just continuing this we have more things to do so <laughs> uh, yeah practice on that it's a good practice uh, this tool is very useful in lots of things and you need to know how to work with it so after that we have two one more thing to do is inserting edge loops so um, we will insert one edge loop for each corner edge okay so this edge we will add one more edge here and one from the top nearby it okay and one over here so that's cool and you can go to the next one and do just the same thing so this one <clears throat> here already have the one that we draw okay so you don't need to add another one we are focusing only we are only doing two uh, in both sides of a corner one so this one this one and one from the from here and one in here okay tap on F8 to bring it back to object mode F8 yeah switch to okay tap on 3 just to see how it looks now if you want to see it better just click somewhere in the background and you will see it like that so it will give you some it will release the wireframes and you can see how it looks like that now that's cool that looks pretty much good but still you see we have those uh, misunderstanding with those uh, faces here but there is nothing I can do right now in order to <coughs> reshape it without getting into troubles um, so I will try to set it to leave it as it is okay so basically um, we did finish this uh, shape but we have one more extra thing to do I want you to right click choose vertex choose okay sorry choose this metal vertex vertex and it's hard to see it but it's because uh, there, there is overcrowded lines here but I did choose chose it and I will go over edit mesh and again click chamfer vertex if it works so I know it's good um, also at the same time switch off the non, non uh, the smooth preview by tapping on one so now I can choose this face you see and if you hold down the shift okay I'm going to show you how it looks on your keyboard I will open my keyboard virtual keyboard just so you understand what I'm talking about you hold down the shift this shift and on your keyboard you have those two uh, arrows left and right arrows here now if you will press this one look what will happen here okay by the way this face is selected so this is what we need if I click here it will uh, select all the next rows of faces now another shift click it's all you do this by holding the shift by the way you have to hold the shift and click this now you can continue and you can even go back okay 
So, but don't go back all the way because it will unselect also this face and then you will have to go back and select the face and start this all over. What I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to, by the way, you don't need the virtual keyboard, you need your own keyboard, do this on your physical keyboard, okay? Now, I want you to, um, you see here where I extrude those faces in, there is the faces that facing us, okay? So just before uh, it select them, like where it select um, those, I think, okay, these, which is uh, the next selection before the ones that's facing us, I want you to select all those, okay, like that. So just watch. I'll select them like that, okay. Here I'm zooming in to see this, and again I will continue, and one more, which you don't see right now, but it doesn't, it didn't select the ones that facing us, okay? Okay, that's it. So, after you've done it, like so, uh, you go over Edit Mesh, and mesh extract okay now it's very important that you uh, do this the same way like the the thing that I'm uh, talked about is like catching the faces but not the faces that um, facing us if we are like looking it that way okay don't select those just those that uh, before those okay um, now, if I will um, tap on 3 to smooth preview this, it will still uh, preserve the same shape without uh, uh, making it look like it's open shape or anything else. Because the, se the, the last, uh, the one before the last uh, edge rows, okay, edge loop, is preserving this. Also here, if you tap on 3 to smooth preview, smooth preview this object, it will still look like those, sto th those both pieces are one unit, okay? And, but we have a hole here, okay, behind this one. And that's it, okay? So I will close this virtual, and the next thing I want you to do is... Um, Okay, the next thing is to set up our, um, our, okay, <laughs> one, one second. I need to create two earphones, okay, but uh, we didn't apply uh, texture, so therefore I may want to wait with it. We can duplicate it, spa duplicate spatial it um, later on, but for now we are going to concentrate on how to create uh, the scene, okay? Now, add this to another layer, okay? So, I will add these two objects to one layer, another new layer, and I will call it earphone, okay? Earphone, uh, right, okay? And you can give it a color, but again, don't give it a green or white color just something that you don't have here already so make sure it's something like blue or bluish uh, should be good okay so that one or maybe even, or maybe even darker purple and save it now I want you to reveal them all like that or wait for it unreveal them we are going to create uh, we are going to for view and expand the for view by putting your mouse cursor over the top, hitting the space, and create CV Curve tool. Now, I want you to draw a line like this, start from the middle, okay, three cubes, another click, three cubes, another click, three cubes, another click, three cubes another click okay now don't hit, hit don't hit the enter key yet just 
switch back to four view by pressing the spacebar and look from the side from right now it's the side okay and expand this window now we want to draw another dot here so we are continuing drawing this line and then I want you to click one here and then three three units three unit three units okay this one is not good so undo that and just like that okay something like in the that high okay and hit enter now uh, press the spacebar again for view with your mouse cursor over the perspective view spacebar again to expand this window and <coughs> basically <laughs> too high but it's okay. Uh, Control D to duplicate this, switch to move tool and I want you to put those two at the sides like this okay following this axis but don't move it so it will still be at the same uh, position okay just now um, select this, shift select this one, go over this menu over here, change to surfaces. From the surfaces menu, choose loft. This will create this background scene, okay? This will uh, give us some uh, better way to look, to render our, uh, our objects. Now, um, hold down, right click, choose vertices on this plane and choose the four first uh, vertex points, okay? And stretch them so your scene will look bigger, okay? And F8 to bring it back to object mode. You can use the scale tool in order to stretch it to the sides also. And you can get rid of those two which you don't need, okay? Now, the thing is, uh, from here, I need you to go over your uh, internet browser okay now this is our browser and I want you to uh, go over Google well actually I don't need to go over Google but go over Google okay and here uh, type in HDRI map okay and do a search search for it now the third the first result this is the high resolution HDRI map pack one by smash method on Debian art now I want you to enter this website okay I will leave the link on the description you see this this is the catalog uh, picture and <clears throat> here you can download this file now I'm already registered to this website I don't really feel my protofilo here but um, this website is like um, is a, a place for artists to share their what they are doing, okay? And <clears throat> you can just sign in if you like, but I think that you don't need to sign in order to download. So you can just download this pack. It's twenty one megabyte point three, twenty one point three megabytes, and it contains all these pictures. Okay, including this catalog one, uh, which means you have 10, 20, 30, 31 images, and basically each one of those balls have this, his own picture. Those pictures are unique. Uh, their extension, their extensions are .hdr, and I'll show you this folder. It's somewhere in my computer, home too apps for burning graphic apps graphic apps just a second takes time overloaded folder and I'm just navigating to this folder okay this is the folder and our resolution HDR map pack okay open it and this is what you will get one file which is the catalog picture and another folder with all the other pictures 
containing inside okay another readme text but that's never mind now what we are going to do we are going to apply HDR map to this scene so in order to do this first we need to make sure we have mental ray uh, loaded mental ray plugin so first go over window setting preferences plugin manager here you need to check that <coughs> scroll down and check that maya2mr.bundle is ticked in both of those boxes if it does so you don't need to do this now also it may it may be that this maya2mr.bundle will appear somewhere here in this list it's, it really depends on your version of maya so if it doesn't appear here at the bottom look for it over here again maya2mr.bundle and tick them both to make sure they are uh, both uh, to make sure that it will be loaded the, the plugin then close and click on this icon here this take uh, icon with those two dots click on it and then you will be able to go over render using click this drop down menu and choose mental rate so if you didn't um, apply this plugin earlier you won't see this here okay so make sure you see it and you load it now go over common tab which is the first thing thing we do and change the preset that you like to see this picture that you are going to render I prefer to use HD720 you go and do whatever you like render options expand this tab and untick this enable default light we don't need it then switch to the quality tab at the quality tab make sure you max sample your max sample level would be two or three okay so I will go with two right now the next thing is go over ray tracing ray tracing you don't need to apply but if you have some other materials in your scene make sure that this is ticked and you are adding more reflections and refraction again only if you have glass materials on your scene apply this if not it's not needed okay and go over indirect lighting tab tick the final gathering and after you tick this go back to the quality and you will see that this was this multi-pixel filtering is now enabled now I want you to choose Gaussian and leave it as it is now most most uh, most of the time when you uh, shoot a product you may want to use Gaussian it's adding some more blur to your picture but uh, I mostly use the Mitchell one when I'm rendering big scenes but if it's for a product it's better to be, to be Gaussian 3 by 3 okay now back to the indirect lighting and then here is where we are adding those uh, pictures we okay one of the picture we downloaded uh, here where it says image best lighting at the top click on create and then you will get this box here and if we close this and zoom out you can see this globe appears here what you need to do is go over this here and take this folder here and navigate to the same uh, folder that you downloaded the HDRI maps so apps for burning for me it's there okay I placing it in this folder it really depends on your convenience if you feel like you can drop it drop it even on the trash no I'm kidding don't do it put it somewhere safe somewhere where it's reachable and where you can uh, even on your documents it's okay high resolution HDR map and after doing some tests I recommend you to use the HDR pack 1 16 okay and choose open so you see this what it gives us it's applying this photo on top of this globe and this is creating environment kind of uh, shadows and lights uh, it really uh, had some more uh, to your scene, add some more 
uh, kind of uh, atmosphere to your scene and also uh, it brings uh, materials that should be uh, metallic uh, look a little bit more uh, realistic okay not a little bit but a lot okay now I want you to first go over the channel box and the plug layer. I want you to reveal it and bring it up like okay sorry plug bring it up like so and I want you to <coughs> rotate so switch to rotate tool hold down the J and holding down the J will snap to some middle points here on this uh, 300, 360 degrees um, angle so it will snap to the 90 degree and I want you to zoom in on it now the first thing is right click choose assign new material and I want you to go over click on mental ray tab here and choose DGS material okay now it will open the DGS uh, this attribute editor now if you see a lot of tabs here like so these are the history and you don't want to go and you know like scroll through all of those so what you need to do is take this and if you're sure that it looks good and you don't need to add some more modifications to it uh, by the way this object we decided that it will be applied uh, a smooth preview so if I will smooth preview you can see it looks good the corners are a little bit sharp so yeah I intended to use this um, this object as <clears throat> as for smooth preview uh, feature now uh, let's tap one to bring it back to non smooth preview and what I want you to do is go over modify edit delete by type history and now look at the attribute editor while I'm pressing it it reduced all the history and left you with only those two uh, basic tabs that belongs to this uh, object and will give you this plug and this DGS material the DGS material this is where we want to continue from we want to bring the diffuse color very almost to the uh, to the start but not not at the start just a little bit farther than there and the glossiness somewhere nearby but a little bit more than the diffuse the specular you may want to give it some white uh, like light light gray okay and then I want you to <clears throat> choose, uh, right click on your object, choose faces, I want you to choose all those faces like that, okay, so it's also selecting those faces here and then you can hold down control and select those and those in order to unselect them. This will leave you with only those faces selected right click on top of it and choose assign new material okay like that and from the pop-out menu click mental ray and choose Maya material X so we have few Maya material X don't get confused there are the three grays three gold and three reddish so choose the Maya material X on the gray section it's actually silver section choose it and then you will get these two tabs switch to the other one make it white like so the reflectivity I want you to bring it somewhere to yeah somewhere there and the glossiness a little bit less than that and then I want you to uh, also make sure you give it a name like plastic you see here you can write the name for it plastic and you see the tab name switch to plastic now it's also applied to the other material which is the DGS material 
so you can instead of calling it DGS if I bring it back to object mode and select it you can see the plastic and the DGS material both appears here okay so in the DGS material change it to silver okay just so you can recognize them now why I'm doing this is because if you will go now and right click choose face choose this face shift select double click on this one then select this double shift double click this one I'm holding the shift always when I'm trying to add more faces so same here see like that if you hold down uh, click um, right click on top of them choose assign existing material you can see that silver and plastic are here so we want plastic here okay in those three uh, loops okay now the next thing is to fix those faces here uh, you want to grab all those faces right click assign new material and again choose the same Maya material X and then you go over preset here okay it, you may see this one first but if you see this one like the sphere here choose preset rubber and replace after you've done so you will see a black ball but I want you to slide it just a little bit over there so it will appear as gray and basically you may want to add a little bit more glossiness I think just a bit like so and now we can take our first render so let's click on this this will give us the resolution gate this icon here under show this is the resolution gate so you'll know that you see the picture as it should this is how it will render this is the frame that like um, the render will uh, will be taken so clear click this here okay this icon this is the render button and now we can wait and see how it went okay now I immediately immediately can see that the plastic is a little bit a little bit too much reflect reflective reflective and also maybe too much glossy it looks like it's much more glossy than reflective but this is how it is and also we didn't apply the smooth preview which I forgot about so let's keep this picture just to see this and then I will switch back to object mode for the object and press free now also I want to go back to the plastic one and maybe reduce the glossiness and also the reflect reflections okay and now let's take a render great great Th that's look okay that looks good um, if you really um, you know there is okay it appears that there is a problem I forgot to, to select those also those faces here so right click on top of them assign existing material that was the Maya material X X2 okay which we need to rename it to rubber rubber like that gray or gray may with hay I'm really not sure sorry F8 and also I did also select those which I didn't see earlier I thought that there were reflections there so right click on top of them assign existing material silver yeah that's this is how it should be so uh, this is basically it those three materials will uh, be on most of our um, objects okay 
the cables will be on the rubber with rubber uh, the controller connections also will be in rubber <coughs> the controller itself will be with this plastic white and basically the earphones which is the next thing I want to talk about before I will uh, close this part of tutorial I will bring the earphone in okay by the way if you like to cho cho select the objects that these layer contained right click on the object on the layer choose select object okay and be careful don't choose remove choose select objects okay select objects it will select your objects now it's better to open the outliner and see those group you see they are marked with this uh, bluish kind of uh, strip so click on that and this will uh, choose them as group now if they if they aren't in group so group them using general and click this button here now you can rename the group name by just double click on it and give it a name so this will keep you a little bit more organized so I want to bring this group like this now if you don't group them those two pieces will just be separated somehow in this uh, work area so you don't want to do this I just give you an example what happens when you don't group them okay I try to select them like, like this select objects you see they are not grouped one appears as green one appears as white now if I will pull them and try to rotate them um, well this is a little bit weird <laughs> but basically they were supposed to be to start be separated okay trust me just make sure they are grouped okay never mind now we will bring it bring it here and like so and I want you to catch after you uh, place them like here I want you to catch this part okay right click on no before that go over your browser yeah again Google and at the search box type in iPhone speaker speaker uh, texture okay and hit enter now you can click on the images uh, tab on your Google account or on your Google um, tabs here and it will uh, switch to the images uh, kind of search and then I want you to take this uh, this um, background okay see these are all tinier and they are like crowded so what you need to do is go over this and click here at the direct link okay and paste it over here and hit enter this will give you just the, <clears throat> the picture save it somewhere in your project folder at the images folder on your project folder for now I will keep it somewhere here and I'll just minimize this for a second bring it over desktop so I can use it from here now right now what I want you to do is go over right click choose assign new material but this time we will use Maya materials we will use Blin okay and when you click Blin give it a name call it speaker grill and hit enter so now you can recognize it now where it says color click on this checkered box once you will get this pop out menu choose file and from this tab click on this image name folder icon and navigate to this texture file we just download so I think this was no I have too many stupid things don't pay attention um, 
Yeah, speaker grill texture too. Okay, and open it. And you won't be able to see it. Just make sure first that quadratic quadratic is set. Uh, the file type uh, set to quadra quadra. Wow, wow, wow! It's hard to say it. Quadri quadratic. Yeah, quadratic. <laughs> this is funny. And okay, now tap on six on your keyboard so you can see it. And quadratic, yeah, quadratic. And then go over, um, <coughs> go over, yeah. Make sure you here at polygon tab, and from the create UVs, I want you to choose automatic mapping. Okay, this will. Uh, this is the best way that I found to fit this without getting into UVs uh, manually uh, setting <laughs> so adjustment or whatever so tap on F8 and you can see it looks pretty much okay there's nothing that I may want to uh, you know maybe I do want to modify center pivot maybe edit delete by type history for it and then I may want maybe again click automatic <clears throat> but you can see it's it looks okay you can just maybe adjust them so it they will look uh, better like so smaller you know but nothing else don't touch it don't play with it Tap on F8 to bring it back to object mode, and as I told you, I want you to click this, okay, but we are going to scroll through these uh, tabs here. Now, we have few other tabs here, but don't touch them, don't try to erase them, just uh, get to the speaker grill material, which is the blend material we just added and go over BAMP mapping, click this checkered box, choose file and then here set it to BAMP the path point 2 okay just write point 2 and enter and then switch to the file tab and click this icon next to the image name and again <coughs> choose the same texture speaker grill open now you need to know to understand if you're applying some texture to your bump or to your color uh, it will always appear as the same UVs order so we already set the UVs we only need to apply the bump and we don't need to apply uh, to set the UVs also for the the bump okay it's going like for both of them now you can um, choose this material, right click on top of it, assign plastic material for it, but first of it, I want you to choose right click, oh first uh, bring it out from smooth preview by tapping one and I want you to <coughs> come over here, okay like so. So, right click, choose faces, and this will be a little bit tricky, but we need to enter to this kind of hole here and choose this first faces, and then we want to unselect only one face and click this face, double click this face so it will select second row so we are starting from the inside part and we want to move outside like so okay you remember this trick the same thing that I've done here in this problematic area this is what I'm doing here I'm unselecting one face click this one and then double click on this one where it's facing the one that I didn't that I unselected and then select it. Now same here unselect one, select the other one and double click the other one 
and then just select this one. So you see I've marked all this part. This is where the rubber part is coming in. So right click on those faces, assign existing material and where it says rubber gray. Great. Now the next thing is dealing with this part. Same, we choose these faces, but this time we also need to pick at least one, two more rows. So unselect this one, select this one, double click, select this one again. And now we are entering to here. So unselect this one. This one is very tiny, you need to be very, very careful. You know what? Don't do it like this. Just select them all like so. And you see, this is like um, if we switch to four view and to the side view, we'll expand the side view and we will zoom in like so. Okay, sorry, we will zoom in over here. Okay, that way it will be easier for us to hold down control, choose only those, and if you zoom in, you can see that those faces that inside that are facing us are not selected. And this is where it should be. Right click on top of it, assign existing material, and again, rubber gray. And F, uh, just tap spacebar, switch to four view, put your mouse cursor over the perspective view, spacebar again, and you can see it has been applied. Now let's render both of them, see what we will get. Okay, and basically, this is where I'm going to say goodbye for this part. and. 4, 3, okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You can see, uh, by the way, I didn't apply the smooth preview. Let me just fix it first. F8, smooth preview. And smooth preview for this one also. Oh, I, I missed something here. I don't really understand how it happened. It's like the second time that it's happening to me. And again, <laughs> I will choose those in order to fix this. And I will choose this one. And right click on top of them, assign rubber gray. Yeah, cool. This is how we want it to be. Now let's take the render. I also want to, s to look at, get a look on this, so I will render it from here. And let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Also here at the front. Oh my God! I'm not sure what's happening here, but we will need to deal with it. Okay. Sorry. 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 Let's deal with it. Choose this face, these faces, right click on top of them, assign existing material, rubber. Now, we may need to add another lines of those. Okay, no we don't. So, three, uh, object mode, three. still look a little bit weird but it does look good right it's not awful pretty much okay just want to take a render great nice So, by the way, you may want to uh, maybe add more reflectivity to the speaker, blend texture, okay, but don't, don't play with it much, 
I think that a little bit reflectivity or glossiness. No reflectivity, it's okay. And let's take a render like that to see the speaker better. Yeah, I think it's pretty much it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this part, and it wasn't that crowded with information for you, but either way, it will help you in the future, I'm sure. Um, yeah, it looks nice. Maybe too much reflective, but still it looks nice. And you can see the plug is looking pretty much okay. Although I may want to make the plastic here just a little bit more glossy or reflective in order to see also maybe adding more eccentric to the white or diffuse okay so it will look like white or not like very gray light white okay so that's it see you soon at the next part bye